Some people might see us sing and think, wow, that's a nice sounding group of girls. But there's something inaccurate about that. Not all of us identify as girls. Some of us do, but not all. Speaking from my perspective, being called a girl makes me feel a little uncomfortable. In the future, if you're not sure about what someone identifies as, don't make assumptions, please, just ask. These were the words that were running through my head a few Sundays ago when chamber choir was asked what pronouns we wanted to use to describe God in the Magnificat. Miss Jenny, our fearless leader, asked us what we thought was right. Did we change this age-old sacred text? Who did we want to honor? Did honoring that person take power away from someone else? My first thought was, as many of us think in times of change, it's fine, right? We don't need to change. If it's like this, there must be a reason for it. Decision making was easy. I quickly justified that using the pronouns he, him, well, that was how Mary had described it. So it was important for us to honor her perspective. Wait, Mary didn't write this. Some dude wrote this. Who was it? Ah, Luke wrote this. Did Luke know Mary? Did he do any type of investigative journalism on the topic? Did he carefully record his, the answers in an interview? Is there a bibliography attached to Luke's work? As far as we know, the facts may have been even less emphasized in BC as they are today. These types of fact checking just weren't a part of that time period. So even if whoever wrote the Magnificat did the absolute best he could to represent Mary, I still had to ask myself, could we fully trust him? The simple answer is that we don't know, which means we'll never know the truth about Mary. What did she see that day? How did she imagine God as a whole? For me, there just wasn't an answer. I had no idea what to think, but I knew, I just knew that this was going to be a highly interesting conversation. <sighs> oh my God. Oh my God, what do I call you? Okay, let's just make one thing very clear. People have always been way more concerned with Mary's virginity than her maternity. <laughs> Mary, Mary was not merely this tunnel of Christ's entrance into the world. She was a mother, a title that in itself holds power. A mother who, despite dealing with God only knows everything women had to deal with during that time, cared for her son. She was the one who nursed him at her breast, dedicated her nights to attend his cries, and ultimately who taught him the ways and words of God, even as he grew in favor with God. So I ask you, who taught Mary how to raise a child? Who taught this 14-year-old these words that would pass from her lips to Jesus's? I, personally, imagine those days Mary looked to her heavenly mother and asked her, how do I do this? How do I do this? A question we are all way too familiar with, and listened. She listened and listened and prayed and listened and took it day by day and eventually figured everything out. She had trust in her God, who granted her trust in herself and trust in her son. It fits to sing Mary's traditional song with unconventional words because Mary was anything other than meek or mild or unconventional. She was a young, unmarried, pregnant woman singing a song about praising a God who rips rulers from their thrones. She sings God's words of lifting up the poor, turning away the rich, filling the hungry with good things. The maternal Mary is so deeply unconventional, so why wouldn't her God be? So yeah, I believe God is a woman, but not because I'm a feminist. 
and not because I have beautiful female role models in my life, and not because I am a woman. These are all true. But they will never come above the simple, radically grounded feminine energy I just feel when I'm connected to the earth, connected to myself, and ultimately connected to God. The maternal Mary is one to be celebrated. The maternal God is one to be found. For holy is her name, now and always. Oh my God, what do I call? Not gonna lie. Coming into this, I was a little worried. Mostly because I adhere to a slightly older doctrine that is often passed off as outdated and limiting. In some cases, quite validly, where God is, well, a man. When we opened up the discussion for what pronoun we wanted to use in this piece, I felt like I had to state my opinion. The idea that God has a masculine aura is a loaded one, filled with a millennia of subjugation and oppression. But at the same time, I can't help but acknowledge that my own understanding of God is a more masculine figure. That is not to say that I agree with or support a history of sexism or violence, nor do I aim to discredit others' opinions where God may be a woman or not even have a gender. I'm simply saying that in my heart, God is a man. I've had many male role models in my life, people I've generally connected with on a more intimate level than many of my female peers. Growing up, I've had more male friends than female friends. To top it all off, a wonderful father who has always been loving and accepting of who I am. And with a God who is supposed to be love and acceptance and a guardian, my experiences have shaped a perception that is tied to years of trust building and love. God is also a he to me because of tradition. Yeah, a favorite word here. <laughs> Whilst I, as I have mentioned before, do not support the violent history of the Christian patriarchy, I do appreciate the thousands of years of tradition that have brought us to this point in time, brought us to where we are now. In my mind, there is a degree of honoring that comes with using the pronoun he. People died following a god that they viewed as a male. When I call God he, I feel like I am paying respect to those martyrs. Because of all this, God, beautiful, loving, accepting God, is a past, present, and future of fatherly love guiding me in all my days. My God, what in the world do I call you? As we all know by now, from the pride flags out on the lawn, to the gender neutral bathrooms, to the sometimes too long sermons preaching for equality, love, and so on. <laughs> all Saints is a very accepting community. We love everyone, we welcome everyone. We like different. We like what isn't considered the quote unquote norm. And we especially love experimenting. One way All Saints likes to change it up is to play with God's gender, specifically in choir lyrics. You'll find a whole range of synonyms for God. He, she, they. I mean, to be fair, Replacing every pronoun for God with God would be a lot of work. And frankly, that's a bit too much God for me. <laughs> it's a little hard to concentrate on the deep emotional lyrics of a gospel song if all you hear is the letter G. Keeping in mind people's opinions of who God is without going too hard on the tongue for us choir folk, they seems like the best option. It's respectful to everyone who believes that God is a he 
or a she. It's respectful to our non-binary and gender fluid friends who identify with a God who has no gender or one that might even switch in between. It even accounts for those of us who believe God is just an omnipotent orb you can contact through telepathy and a whole lot of kneeling, specifically me. <laughs> However, this begs the question, is they a bit too encompassing? Your relationship with God is personal and belongs to you and you only. Does using they take away from that special experience of talking to a God that you personally identify with? Is it too far removed and impersonal? The answer to this question can only be decided by you. For me, it works, since I picture God as a glowing ball of light sitting on some fluffy white clouds. However, it might not work for you. The only thing that is certain about they is that it can be anything you want it to be, whether that be he or she or neither or both. Oh my God, I think I've got it. There is no right answer to this question. So my thought is avoid the question, cheat the system, use the second person. My soul doth magnify you, Lord, and holy is your name. God's gender doesn't come into it at all. After all, there's no way to know how Mary saw God, so we can't represent that. The backup might be to represent how all saints sees God, but that's not any easier. We all see God so differently, there is no consensus. It's very natural and very beautiful and very inconvenient. There's no pronoun that we can use that won't leave somebody out, doesn't exclude some experience. But I'd like to think that maybe you comes the closest to encompassing every idea of God. That's because it's not actually about God so much as it is about your relationship with God. Here's one angle on it. I like it for me. When I was thinking this through, I tried to put my finger on what pronouns I use when I pray. And I realized I don't know. I mean. I don't pray in the third person. I'm the only one around, unless God is too, so there's no one else I could be talking to. But it feels right even outside of grammatical necessity. Um, it's self-centered, but what matters to me is not God's self so much as God's connection with me. Taking on the enormous, nebulous issue of who God is feels far beyond the scope of my experience as someone who is only one person. On the other hand, the issue of the ways in which God touches my life is definitely still nebulous, but it feels less enormous. When I pray, I use you, because I'm focused on God, but also because I'd like to believe that God is focused on me. And I think it works for Mary, too. Setting these words up so that she's talking to and not about God, again, puts the focus on her relationship with her God. How does she feel? What does she want God to know? I think it's safe to say that she's not writing a thank you card that Gabriel's meant to ferry back for her. This isn't easy stuff, and the news she's just received isn't a light burden either. She's got to be pretty emotional, because her life just changed. Completely. Forever. The Magnificat is what she has to say about it, and I'm not buying it that she's saying it for some future generation, for Gabriel, or even for her unborn child. No human could be that selfless, not in the moment after receiving news like that. And last I checked, Mary was human. In my mind, she's making this extraordinary declaration for herself and for no God other than the one that is entirely hers. Why wouldn't she directly address God, who is somehow, some way, the parent of the child that caused all this? How could she do anything else? So, Maybe you isn't just a clever way around a difficult question. Maybe it will allow everyone to feel validated by this messy text. Maybe it even offers a whole new understanding of the issue. Or maybe it's just one more option we need to deal with, as if we needed more options. <laughs> oh my god. In the end, Chamber Choir took a vote on whether to use he, she, they, or you. 
Every one of these options appealed to someone, but a solid majority of the group wanted to use female pronouns. This was not simply because we are perceived as an all-female group, nor is it because any one of these pronouns is wrong. The simple reason behind it is that it wasn't a simple decision at all. Some of us wanted to see the conception of Jesus as a more caring act. Some of us were excited to defy tradition. Some of us wanted to respect those who don't see themselves represented by a male god. Some of us were inspired by our female role models. And some of us just like feeling like a badass when we say it. <laughs> For each of us, our reasons were personal. Everyone's relationship with God is different, so it's natural and valid that each of us has different opinions. What we think is not at all what you need to think. In the end, it's really all up to the individual on how they wish to address God. He, she, they, even you. It's your decision to make. Or if you're still on that journey, or if you decide not to even make that decision at all, that's okay too. And so we encourage you to have your own conversations about it. This experience opened our eyes and allowed us to explore the perspectives of the people around us. I think we all know the world could use a little bit more of that type of love. And so we'll end by wishing you all a joyful Christmas. And oh, oh my God, God was this, this hard. hard.